and welcome to Tomorrow. I'm your host, Joshua Topolsky. I'm here with Ryan Houlihan. Ryan. Hello, Internet. Hello. There he is. And we are talking today live to you about Blade Runner 2049, Blade Runner Zero, and the meaning of your useless manufactured existence. It's a big show. It's the first Tomorrow uh, that we've done that's like properly in the fashion of the new Tomorrow. It's actually like Tomorrow 2049. <laughs> if you think about the old Tomorrow, it was like, you know, lower budget, um, kind of a more streamlined idea. The story was better. The acting was better. The characters were more developed. But, but this one has a sexy Ryan. But they didn't have a sound that was like, wow, <laughs> every time something good happened. And so in this case, you're going to get that sound, but not much else. Um Okay, so anyhow, welcome. Thank you for being here. Ryan, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having so you're me. You're contractually obligated <laughs> to be here whenever I want, which is yeah, something I actually find a blood. wonderful thing. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the new Blade Runner and the old Blade Runner. So I just let me just set a couple things out here. First off, there are going to be spoilers. If you haven't seen the original Blade Runner, just... Turn this off. Just get away, get away from your computer. Put, shut, your, shut your laptop. Put your laptop in the garbage pour gasoline into the garbage, drop a match in it, and then let your entire apartment building your house burn down. If if you haven't seen Blade Runner 2049, do the same thing, but with more, there's like a wow sound in the background. <laughs> Cue up like a Skrillex album and then do it. Um, but we're going to be talking about these movies in explicit detail, so there's going to be spoilers. So if you haven't seen the new one, uh, you probably shouldn't. Li- I mean, do what you want. I mean, it's America. Live your life. We're in America. I don't know where you are, but we're, we're, in, we're in our dystopian future. We're in the dystopian future of America, so you can do whatever you want. But there are going to be spoilers. And, it, I mean, if you don't know anything about Blade Runner or you don't want to talk about Blade Runner, it probably won't be very interesting. So that's thing number one. Thing number two is, like, this is the first of the new tomorrow, which is true, which is, like, every week we're actually going to have a specific thing that we have done and are going to talk about. In this case, it was really easy. It was, like, the new Blade Runner was coming out right when we were doing the first show, so it's really easy to get into this because – Blade Runner, for me, for a very long time, has been my favorite movie. I mean, really has, like, shaped who I am as a person in a lot of ways. Uh, so it seemed like a, like a no-brainer. Anyhow, that's my – those are my – anything do you have to say, Ryan, before uh, we get started? I would say that my history with Blade Runner is I remember I read the book when I was in high school, and it mm-hmm. was one of those first books that you read as a teenager where you were like, what if – what if we're all? You mean do, the do Android Dream of Electric Sheep? Yeah, the Philip K. Dick novel that's based on. Yes. Okay, did you hear that? That's me being an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> uh, like, or in me. the movie tie-in version that says Blade Runner, or do Android Dream of Electric Sheep? But uh, I read it and yeah. I thought it was one of those first books that like I thought philosophically about it, and I didn't come to any profound conclusions. I was like eleven, but yeah. that's early. But I, it was yeah. it was amazing, and, and and then I rented the movie, and I remember like being like, I like this movie, and my dad was like, It's a great movie, and it was one of those things oh, your that dad was felt, into it. Yeah, I, yeah. Think my, I think my dad was also into it, and he was like, I remember my dad and my mom arguing because he thought that it was very romantic. Oh yeah, and my mother was like, This is horrible because he is kind of <laughs> horrible to Rachel in the movie. Yeah, in the original Blade Runner, in case you're wondering. Uh, Even worse in the book. And my father was like, this is very romantic. And, and she was like, this is disgusting, which is basically my, <laughs> the whole relationship of my parents in a nutshell, I would say. Oh, very sweet. Yeah, I, I hope mean, they're watching live. I don't know. I don't, I'm sure they are. They'll have comments <laughs> about how my face and hair look later. Um, so, so look, this is – I saw the movie last night. I went to a screening in a suburban theater. There were literally six other people in the theater. Really? It was almost totally empty. Uh, and – and uh, I, I, I left with a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings. So I think the first thing we should do is we should talk about, like, I want to talk about how I feel. Initial reaction. About this. Yeah. So first off, I was convinced that this movie was going to be terrible. And it was not terrible. No. There are, I think it should Rock never have been made. bottom expectations helped this movie yeah, out yeah, a lot. Yeah, like my expectations were low. It was not terrible. I don't think it should have been made. Mm-mm. I think it was a... Uh, uh, I think it's a something has happened bad in the world that it was it's made. It's fan fiction. It should not have been produced, and I am very mad at all the people who made it. But that said, like they didn't make a terrible movie. No, it's good fan fiction. Um, but 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 also, it's not a, it's not exactly a good movie. No, which I think is so. I have a lot of conflicting feelings, which maybe that's what good art does. I mean, maybe good art makes you feel conflicted. Maybe good art is about you questioning you. whether or not the art was good. Suddenly the Koontz is me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Great Lady Gaga reference. Thank Very you. Very good stuff. So, so let's just set this up a little bit. 
Okay. And I just want to preface this by saying I just want I'm going to talk to the viewer here for a moment. <laughs> I'm going to talk explicitly about the film. I'm going to talk about things that happen in the movie. If you haven't seen it, please, please do not get pissed at me for it being ruined because <laughs> I'm now warning you I'm going to spoil the movie. You, this will be available later. All right. So the movie takes place uh, uh, 30 years after the original Blade Runner, hence the title, which fucking sucks, in my opinion, 2049. Yeah. So don't stick a year on your movie. No. Um, it takes place 30 years after the original Blade Runner. Uh, replicants were outlawed and then were brought back into service thanks to this guy named Wallace something or something Wallace, who's a character played by Jared Leto. We're going to get to him in a second. Um, you see some clips here of Ryan Gosling. Oh, there's Jared Leto right uh, there. Yeah. Or is it? I, we're going to no, we're going to talk about Jared Leto in a moment. But but anyhow, so replicants are back in action, and the protagonist of the film, Agent K, is a Blade Runner hunting down old Nexus replicants, which are the Terrell Corporation model replicants. Six through eight, apparently, is what they they made, and he's also uh, a replicant. But the new replicants are. They're nice. They don't kill humans. They don't. They obey. They don't have trouble with their. They don't get like, caught up in all kinds of emotional like feelings. They don't go like, oh, Me I neither. They're like I would like to live longer, or how come I'm not? You know, I can't get a girlfriend or whatever. No, they're, they're basically on Paxil. Whatever. Yeah, whatever trouble <laughs> the replicants originally has been like eased by a series of exciting like uh, conversations they have with a white wall. So, <laughs> so, so anyhow, compelling, so Agent, compelling, so, so compelling, K, compelling. Yeah. So Agent K <laughs> discovers. A bombshell, uh, 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 bombshell secret that can ch- will change the shape of reality. Breaking news. Yeah. So here's the thing. There's a moment in this film. It's very important. It's the most important, arguably the most important thing that happens in the entire movie, where the incredible secret that not only sets the stage for all of the events in Blade Runner 2049, but also completely alters the fucking plot of the original Blade Runner. Yeah. Where this happens. And here's how we come upon this earth-shattering, mind-blowing, world-destroying fact. Okay? Are you ready? Here's what it is. They have discovered some bones. Agent K has discovered some bones in a <laughs> this box. This is an episode of Bones, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Agent K has discovered some bones in a box. They bring the bones into the laboratory where the lab technician, Coco, is analyzing them. He's an expert. He is a fucking forensic. He's in a plastic printed. He's got the, he's got the he, special forensics yeah. vest on, so you know he knows how to operate the machinery. He's probably prep. Coco is is scanning and zooming on the on the the remains, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, oh, the, it looks like this uh, woman. It's a woman. Looks like she had a baby. Looks like there was some trouble. Oh, she had a C-section. Mm, okay, good. He Wrap moves. it up. That's right. <laughs> Got it. Good. Why would this replicant? Why would the replicant who Agent K had killed? Why was he keeping these bones? No one knows. Uh, uh, no case one closed. Knows. Anyhow. Then Agent K. Ryan Gosling's character nonchalantly walks over to the zooming machine, the scanning zooming machine. She's like, hands. Mm. he's like, like that, like three zooms, and he's like, hey, this was a replicant. Okay, here's the fucking plot of the movie. Replicants, at least the Nexus line, could have babies. Oh, okay, so the baby. fucking genetically engineered robot, whatever the fuck they are, now can give birth to children. To babies. That they can just they can have sex. They have a baby. The baby shoots out of there, or is a C-section or whatever. He just discovered that it because he zoomed. He zoomed like, well, it's a C-section, but <laughs> presumably maybe they could actually have a, a natural birth or whatever. Three clicks of the zoom that Coco just decided not to do for reasons we can't know. <laughs> and, and now the world— Yeah, apparently replicants have, like, a, a number in their bones. And he was like, we're not checking for that. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy, but it's a fucking ridiculous <laughs> yeah. reveal. It's like it's like the greatest secret in the world has been revealed by you clicking zoom three times because Coco didn't know how to go that level or whatever. Okay, so then, so then, but then everybody's reaction is like, hmm, this could be bad if it gets out. It's not like your brain is broken. It's not like your mind is melting out of your head. And you're like, oh, you've God. Lived your, you've lived your whole life. You're a replicant. Two so you, species at war. You understand how replicants function. You know they can't have babies. Yeah. You're a human. You're like, well, only human beings have babies. Replicants can't procreate. That's if you found I- iPhones could make other iPhones, I'd worry. Yeah, but it literally would be like, <laughs> oh, I put my 3GS and my uh, 4G or what, 4S or whatever the fuck. I, even the bottom. <laughs> I put them in a drawer last night, and when I woke up, there was like a baby iPhone <laughs> sitting next to them. But, everybody but Coco's just, just like, look at these iPhones. It's fine. Robin Wright's like, look, we gotta just brush this under the rug. Like, eh. she says a bunch of shit that it seems so like forced. Like, this will break the world. It's like, well, you kept it between you and like two other people, and it didn't seem like a big deal in the in the lab. I would have started crying uncontrollably. I would have been like, I, you know, I've been reading it, mm-hmm. the book. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard about it. It's about this clown, Pennywise. 
Anyhow, in it, there's a section where they talk about the horrors that the clown is causing amongst the children of Der- uh, Derry, which is the location of it. Derry, uh, Maine, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Anyhow. Yeah. And, they, and one clean. of the characters is like, it's not that these things were scary. It's that they like broke your idea of what was possible and like how the world operated. Yeah. Which is exactly how you'd feel if a replicant suddenly could give birth, which is like a synthetic thing that suddenly can procreate. And Anyhow, and... so like the entire movie hinges on this idea that there's a baby, a replicant baby. And can we just pause and say the second I saw that this was a secret baby movie, I still was like, I'm going to try to enjoy this. But all secret baby sequels are just tough, tough stuff like Cursed Child, so, all of its bad fan fiction-y weird. So the problem is not just like, OK, so there's a secret baby, but also and this is my I will say like and I will talk a lot about different things that happen in this movie. And we're going to take your calls. Also, by the way, you can call in. There's a number 202-688. 1697, please call us with questions, In a bit. comments, it, whether you're angry, you know. Um, but here's the thing that, that really bothers me. It's that not just that they're like, oh, here the plot is this baby, but it actually forces you to revisit the first movie. Yeah. And it forces you to kind of reevaluate all like of what the was char- happening. Like wasn't happening. I mean, they literally say the in one out. part, like, oh, maybe this is the whole reason you guys met was so you yeah. could have this baby. And it's like, I don't want you to fuck with the first movie. Like, no. I don't need the idea of the first movie to be like altered by the second movie, which is a bunch of new ideas that may or may not be good at all. No. And in my opinion, they're not either they're not that great or they're not that well explored. But that said, I was very conflicted watching this. Here, listen, it's a beautiful movie. It really is stunning. I, I like I liked some of the casting. I really thought like the Joy stuff was interesting in the way that I liked her. I thought mm. this was interesting, yeah. like creative. Yeah. Um, there was moments that I was like, this is a beautiful moment. The like dream creating sequence or memory creating sequence was great. That was okay. But I mean, as like the rest of the movie, like when you step back, it's like a movie about oppression with all white people. Here's the thing. <laughs> well, I mean, the, 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 I, did, I did actually find myself thinking, I was like, this is really crazy. Like everybody's white and then there's like, there's people of color who are other characters, but they're all bad, basically. Like, yeah. every one of them is, like, a bad guy. And I was like, this feels, like, weirdly outdated and racist. And all these powerful women exist only to, like, f- fulfill the, like, dreams of men, which yeah. was weird. Although I think this does raise an interesting question about, like, the replicants being, I mean, they're all white, mm-hmm. right? Well, that was, I was thinking, I was like, I wish they would have explicitly said, like, we're trying to create, like, perfect patriarchal ideal right. like the worst version of that ideal um eugenic stuff would have been cool to explore and instead of doing to, that you know. they were like let's cut this lady up yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, okay i want to i want to talk about jared Leto. okay so hon, but, i mean i really want to talk about yeah. the, and then the, we're gonna get to call soon i yeah, promise we're, we're going Give to get one calls, minute but but so um so here's the thing like there are moments in this film like where i was going like wow they really don't make movies like this anymore. Like this yeah, is a, I thought this that too. Like, it's slow. It's cinematic. Moody, it's, noir. Yeah, it, it's thoughtful. But then it's like, oh, in relief, like in comparison to the Avengers, this movie is very like cerebral. But in comparison to movies that are cerebral, it's actually kind of dumb. Yeah. Like, there's a part. There's a lot of parts of it that are like, I was like, you know, there's a section in the movie where there's like a ten minute like love making scene. Yeah. And I feel like they thought they had something really special. I feel like the director was like. Just let's stay on this. We're just going to stay on this for like 10 minutes straight. It's going to be this like tracking shot. Well, as it happened, I was like, this is really cool. But it's sort of like a, a bad ride where you're like, while you're on it, you're screaming. And when you get off, you're like, what was the point of that? That was 30 seconds. I waited how long for 30 seconds of like an effect? I was like, this is going to be fucking crazy. I was like, what's going to happen? And then mm-hmm. really. Even Mackenzie Davis. Anyhow, look, I'm not trying to. Oh, so this is OK. Let me tell you. By the way, again, I want to say there are a lot of things about this movie that were good. Mackenzie Davis plays a character that's like Pris Light. Yeah, everybody in this movie is like a version of somebody else, which you know, in some way is clever, but also is actually kind of stupid. It's yeah. like, so Ryan Gosling's Deckard, and then Mackenzie Davis is like kind of a Pris character, yeah. and then the girl who creates memories is like J.F. Sebastian from yeah. the first one. And, and there's all Joy this, like, is supposed to be Rachel, which is this like ideal archetype. Yeah, and 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 there's all this like mirroring of characters that I it was I think, very Star Wars. Yeah, very Star Wars. Almost like they wanted to reboot it so they could make a bunch of sequels. Because they thought it'd be gonna be a really successful <laughs> franchise. Whoever it, at what is it Warner Brothers? Yeah, who was like, this is a slam dunk, a movie about the nature of reality and humanity, a cult movie from the eighties about, about an orphan and replicant. Like whoever thought this. Listen, I'm, I'm bated breath for the Dark Crystal 2049. Ooh. That's what I have to say to WV. But the Dark Crystal was a wasn't it like a success, like a hit? I don't know. Was it a hit? Blade Runner was a failure. Yeah, it was. People rejected this film at the box office. They were like, we're not interested in this. 
And also, it is there's something weird about this movie that's like total fan service. It's like if you love the original Blade Runner, yeah. there's a lot here for you. Yeah. If you don't know shit about the original Blade Runner, what is this movie? Yeah, no. It's like, it's well, like, I, saw what it with my, I saw it with my boyfriend, and he several times I was like, <gasps> like, okay, everybody, cool for a second, spoilers. But when the uh, Rachel shows up, a spoiler alert. I was like verklempt, and he was like, "What are you, what what? I don't know who this is." Like, there's no frame; they don't explain a lot. There's no. like a shot of her in a picture frame, it's and like, that's you know, the only it's explanation. Like you get it. you it's get. like this guy's old girlfriend, the yeah. one who had the baby, the replicant baby. Victory rolls. Anyhow, right. so I, I I I will say this: we're gonna go to calls now. Yeah, but let's go to I calls. I was like extremely emotional after watching this. My first thought was like, it was like somebody had reached into my past and manipulated what was there and ruined it. That was my first thought. It was like So what you're saying is Ghostbusters should be men. <laughs> <laughs> it was like seeing those characters as females. <laughs> no. No, here's my thing with all these reboots and stuff. I don't think it ruins the original for me. The original is still a fantastic no. film. It, it just I it doesn't ruin it, but it forces you to ask days, questions about it yeah. that are like unnecessary. Yeah. It's true. like it's like you don't need to I mean, yes, I get it. You're you're continuing the story. Mhm. I just feel like they raised points that were really, like they fucked with the old movie, which and you seems have like un- very unnecessary. Yeah. Like Star Wars, you could have told do- another story in this universe. The Star Wars reboot it didn't doesn't need to do be that. a family thing. Anyway, let's, okay, let's wait, go wait, to calls. before we go to calls. I got to talk about Jared Leto. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> or Disney's animatronic president's Jared Leto. <laughs> Jared Leto's character is like the ultimate bad movie villain. He speaks like exclusively in Bible quotes. He's like in like in like made up Bible quotes. And the Lord said, okay. "Let there be light." So there's a there's a there's a scene in <laughs> the original again. Blade Runner when Wrecker Hauer mm-hmm. and uh, the guy who plays Leon whose name escapes me now is William something I think. Um they go into to talk to the doctor who makes the eyes and 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 Wrecker Hauer says something. I think it's like fiery the angels fell, born burning in the fires of Orc or something, mm-hmm. which is like very biblical sounding. It may be from something. Also, Wrecker Hauer was just kind of spat at the mouth. For but Wrecker Hauer was also like, "Who's in your apartment?" Like just yeah. said normal stuff. He was like, he was like, "I want more life, fucker." No. Originally, but then yeah. father later. Um, Jared Leto spoke exclusively in things like uh, fiery the angels fell. Like that's how he talks. He in the movie. he did the exact opposite of his Joker. Yeah, but it was like the same it was level. Like as boring as it possible. was the same level of ridiculousness as his Joker. Yeah. It was like in completely unbelievable character that even in the context of this dystopic hell world of 2049, I feel like people would be like, "What are you yeah. talking about? Like, you're a businessman. You run the replicant factory. You just." I'm sorry, they have the sluice where the replicants drop down into his chamber. Also, all of his areas are like ch- weird chambers. That I make will no say, sense. though, I did like the water effects, even though there yeah. wasn't water. Like, yeah. le- water, wa- life comes from water. No, like, I thought cool. that was nice. It's visual. cool, but he's like, he's like sitting in a room that's yeah. like, he's blind and the room is 90% like water floor. <laughs> yeah. It's like, maybe it's a bad idea if you're blind <laughs> to be in a room where it's all water. Also, love wearing heels. I was like, if you're a replicant, just make her taller. <laughs> Or just give her like heel implants. Yeah. She All right. Let's let's go to. All right, let's take some calls. We've got Jack here from Illinois. Hey, Jack, lay it on us. I was wondering what you guys thought of the sequel, as far as compared to the original, as far as like the treatment and mistreatment of the female characters. Obviously, this makes it a conversation for us to be having, but I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, you know, obviously there is there is a intensity between the male and female characters in these films. Like like in the first one. I mean, in the first one, the, the female characters are, are pretty pretty abused. Yeah. I mean, even Rachel, this is what I was talking about with my parents, like, Rachel, like, the love interest and kind of the main second secondary character of the movie is, like, kind of raped, like, kind yeah. of, like, manhandled by Harrison Ford. It's not, it's, like, romantic, but then it's also, like, fucked up. Like, it's not that romantic. Yeah, it's, you know? it's not, no. Um, in this There's movie, I mean, there clearly was, like, a flip of of power where it was, like, but I do feel like they went back to the same no, well. No, it was with, the archetypes with, of strong female characters that aren't act, they're physically strong or yeah. they have power, but, but they're, they're not actually a full character. They're yeah. just to like reflect what some guy wants. Like love, like love as a character. Why did Jared Leto need to exist if you could have just made love the person in charge? Well, like and well, also be a superpowered well, love, but, fighter. Lo- but love was also like her entire, you know, thing was about hunting down something for. Jared Leto's character, right? Yeah. So everybody was like in service of of all the women were in service of a man, yeah. essentially in this movie. And I think that's like, look, Ridley Scott has fucking problems. Like he's bad at making movies that are diverse. He's bad at making movies that are seen from a viewpoint that isn't like a, a white male. Yeah. He, I mean, these like this movie. I know it wasn't his movie, but he definitely like 
handpicked everybody and involved. And a lot of and... the plot points in this movie, I do know, were pulled from like ideas for the original that they didn't get to carry. He's like, to oh, fruition. I wanted to abuse more women in the original, but uh, we, we didn't wanted have... to cut a, a newborn lady right up. Yeah, no, just there's chopper like, to bits. There's like the, the thing with the right, the thing with the with that the replicant bad. where he just like kills he just her, stabs for no her in like her it's uterus. Like, it's what to demonstrate for love who doesn't care because she's a fucking replicant. No, it's just like this. I mean, again, but I will say in keeping but Jared even Leto's Joy, character. Like, Joy exists. Her whole thing is like, I exist to tell you whatever you want. And then they tried to develop her where they were like, she's got some kind of, she wants to be a real girl. She's a Pinocchio yeah. story. But, but then at the end, they're so, like, no, that, it was advertising. But that felt so empty because it was like, you knew that she was like a manufactured mm-hmm. product that was meant to serve this purpose. Like, you see very early on, she's like a 1950s housewife. I actually think that's like a good reflection of Ridley Scott's yeah. idea of the women in the movie is like, they're all like there to support and prop up and like move forward. Them, they actually are like manic pixie dream girls. A, a joy, absolutely. I is. mean, like Pris, the original Pris yeah. concept is like kind of a manic pixie dream girl. It's like yeah. JF Sebastian is a fucking gamer. She's gate. doing backflips. JF Sebastian's like a gamergate guy. Yeah, and like she's like the girl who's like saves him. Like this kind of like fantasy anime girl, essentially. Yeah. She actually is like the basis for a lot of anime characters. So maybe there's like. Sorry, Jack. I know you're still on the line, but we're rambling crazily. Uh-huh. What was your take on it? I mean, what did, what was your thought on it? Oh, I think we lost. Just Johnny Hunt. He's like, fuck this. He I was like, I'm done with it. I do think we should mention quickly <laughs> that uh, there was a lot of women in it, but there was absolutely no women of color. And that was just, you know, there's no men of color either, but it, we have to say that. There were there were, there were were men of color, but bad. they were all like side, side characters, characters who were kind of like Side characters for two bad. seconds. Yeah. Like, it was... Uh, it actually stood out to me. Like, it was distracting. Well, they gave a speech about slavery. <laughs> Everybody like, there was white. But literally, like, it was distracting in that yeah. it didn't seem to reflect. Like, I know, I could, I, one thing I'll say, I understand the premise that this is not our timeline. Like, this is, 2019 wasn't like, 20, no. it's not going to be like 2019 no. in this movie. And, well, maybe if Trump keeps at it, I mean, <laughs> it might end up that way. But, like, I understand that this is its own thing. Mm-hmm. But it still felt like, I was watching it going like, I don't know. There's just so many white people. Yeah, this is it feels like it'd be more erratic. diverse based on what I know of America right well, now. It was their chance to really make the franchise into. All right, let's go to another call. We've got no. Jake from West Lafayette, uh, Indiana. And uh, let's see what Jake has to say. Jake, what's up? Jack and Jake, really diverse set of people. Speaking <laughs> of diversity. <laughs> it's Joy and Joe. I know the diversity. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, Jake. Um, my question was about uh, what did you guys think? Plot-wise, is the point of injecting a Ryan Gosling character with the uh, replicant child's actual memories. I didn't actually understand why that yeah. was a plot point. So I've been thinking a lot about this, and so there's two there's two possibilities, right? One is like mm-hmm. she's making these memories, and they're based on hers, and they just end up in replicants, and it's a random thing. Or that memory maybe is in all the replicants as a kind of like a deep-seated. But then that made me think maybe the idea is that that girl's been looking for her parents, yeah. and she has these memories that she think can lead her back to them, and that her... I'm actually getting chills describing this because it would be a really good plot point, but that her her thing is like this under she's like creating this underlying bed of memories for every replicant in the hope that somehow yeah, it like that's brings what I was them thinking. closer to like finding who her parents are. That she was leaving little bits for whoever ended up being in place for it. Yeah. Or alternatively that she knows who the memories are sort of going to. And she said, Well, this guy's gonna be assigned to be a blade runner. Who else who who what what, right. what other person would be perfect for it? Or Sorry, I didn't mean to stop you. No, I was go just, for it. I was just, or Ryan Gosling is actually the kid. Yeah. And it's not the girl. It's twist, twist. She's a replicant, and he's out there dying as the actual human who was the child of the I replicant. Like, Thanks for dying. I got to go meet my daughter. on the flip side, if you're thinking purely about sequels, now you've got a re- another no. replicant baby who presumably would be capable of reproducing. The sequel should be a Taken film where the daughter gets taken and Harrison <laughs> Ford, Ford rips up Los Angeles. I, I gotta say, I gotta say, Jake, I don't know how you felt about felt about this, but Deckard <clears throat> lived at the end of the movie. Completely outrageous. And he and okay, Han Solo's dead, but Deckard gets to <laughs> live. Yeah, he says the hard the drinking, furious. hard drinking, hard partying Deckard somehow <laughs> made it through. <laughs> He's doing fine. But Jake, let me ask you a question. Living in a radiation hotel. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Deckard, replicant or human? You know, you exactly. would have to assume human, right? Or else, like, what's what's the point? Would you? Would you have Why to assume it? Why is it such it? a big deal? I if... mean, Ridley, Ridley Scott claims he's a, he's a replicant. Harrison That's... Ford claims he's a human. Yeah, really? well, Her- I believe Harrison Ford because he's way cooler than Ridley Scott. <laughs> How many times has Ridley Scott been in a plane crash and survived? Because Harrison Ford, exactly hey, Harrison zero Ford times. has done it at least <laughs> once. True. True. <laughs> Anyhow, Jake, that's interesting. I, mean, I think that's a really that's a very good question to ponder. I, I was thinking a lot about like 
what were the reasons these yeah, memories exist? Yeah, you like? actually said something that kind of stoked me a little bit, which was if her memories actually were infectious somehow and in getting the replicants to believe that they could be more human-like or something like yeah. that, that well, would be a good plot point well, they, as well, they, they, except that wasn't explicit like at all. But they do, but the, the leader of the revolution, which also was one of the worst subplots of all time, which is like, we're going to, the resistance, a, there's going to be a revolution. It's like, take it She easy. had like three minutes of screen on time. Yeah, it's like, that's yeah. A, the, the three minutes of screen time is like, there's a revolution coming. It's like, is there? It feels uh, like uh, Wallace kind of Seems everything. like you guys <laughs> just got some matching outfits. But uh, she said like, oh, we all have that dream that we're the one, which maybe yeah. suggests that that particular memory about the horse is given to all of them. But then you think the replicants would be like, "Oh, you've got the horse oh, memory. Yeah. Well, what the fuck's up with that?" We're all talking about this horse. Yeah, like we're all obsessed with the horse. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Jake. Anyhow, that's good, Jake. Thank you very much. Speaking of who and who isn't a replicant, Brad in Vancouver has some theories. Okay, Brad, lay it Let's on us. See what Brad has to say. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? All right. Uh, yeah, I have a. There's a part in the second movie where I forget which two characters, but. They're talking about a replicant um, from the olden days, and they say like he's very easy to, uh, very hard to identify. Where all the replicants in the new 2049 are like immediately identifiable by mm -hmm. some way. And I wanted to know if you guys had any theories. Well, I, I have my own theory, but did you guys catch that line? Do you know what I'm talking about? I, so I don't actually know. I don't remember what you're talking about. Like I do know that it's interesting that in the with the new replicants, apparently they're serial numbers in the eye, which is good. It's like better idea than yeah. Like the Void Confa thing, when you think about it, actually, it's weird. They were like, we're going to make these replicants completely impossible to identify unless you do this crazy, like, mental test on them for an hour. Yeah, you could have just, like, put an, like a, a, just like an a Apple thing on their arm. I don't want to be, like, all concentration <laughs> camp or whatever, but you could have put a serial number on their arm and they're a fucking replicant. Yeah. Okay, anyhow. So, no. To, it, what, so, what scene was this? Um, I forget exactly. I, I wanted to do a rewatch to nail down the details, but I don't on, actually on, remember. Brad. There's a scene where, they, <laughs> that if you watch it again, sorry, nothing. I was just giving you shit for not remembering exactly what scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and I have a theory that basically, when every two characters interact. If it's a human character and a human character, they do like a slight smile before, and the replicants are just not allowed to smile whatsoever, and that's how they're told to part. Like replicants will just never smile, and that's mm. why they picked Ryan Gosling because they're basically like, let's find an actor that can do very few words and never have any facial emotion, and they just said a lot of smiling. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I saw Ryan Gosling. I don't know, Brad. That's an interesting question. Um, I I feel like I saw Ryan Gosling smile. Sounds like Brad's getting arrested. I don't know. No, no, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Like wait, the wait, where are you right now, and what's happening with the police sirens that we're hearing? Oh, uh, I'm in Vancouver, which, as you know, is the yeah. crime district it's of the world. world. Oh, it's a hell no. world. Yeah, no. We don't know anything Sorry, about that. Well, listen, so Brad, 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 stay safe out there, okay? And, and uh, you know, remember your – I don't know what the rights are in Canada, actually. I think they put you in solitary <laughs> immediately. So, you know, good Thanks, luck. Thanks, Brad. Anyhow, so, I mean, there are, here's the thing about this movie. You know, A.O. Scott, uh, I read the A.O. Scott review for the New York Times, mm -hmm. and he talked about how the old, the last, the original movie, not the old movie, the original movie didn't need, like, a reveal. It yeah. was like, and there was a it was plot. Just good. It was kind of like beginning, middle, and end. It told a story. It asked you questions. It made you, it made you ask questions, but it didn't require some, like, huge reveal. One of the things I thought was annoying about this movie was that it, it forced you into this kind of, like, What's it going to be? Like, you knew from the beginning. Yeah. If from the beginning, it's like, what's it going to be? What is the big twist that, like, just shocks what's us? What's going to happen? And I think that this is the kind of idea of modern narratives where you have to do that. Like, emotionally, emotionally, this film was very evocative because it really, it, it, it pulled the right kind of levers. Yeah. But in terms of when I think back on the storyline, it feels much more forced than the original, you know? The well, original is very very cut and dry. I know that when they made the original, and this is gonna sound insane, but I did read this, that that essentially the screenwriter and, and Ridley Scott hadn't really read the original book. Mm -hmm. They had gotten the plot points and basically the general idea, and then they created their own moody, emotional thing in the way that the book was moody and emotional, yeah. but they were genuine. Whereas I think this, it's someone that read the book, Saw the graphic, read the graphic novel, saw the movie a thousand times, and then had yeah. a very clear thing. As opposed to some ambiguity, they had a very clear statement to make, which is sometimes feels clunkier. I will say this: like I remember reading um, to Andrew's Dream of Electric Sheep after I saw Blade Runner, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, this is nothing like the movie." 
But there were there were a lot of scenes in the new movie that were reminiscent of the book. Yes. Like the part where he doesn't, you know, where Agent K doesn't pass his evaluation. Yeah. And Robin Wright is like, I can get you out of the building. There's a scene that like literally is where that book turns. Yeah. Where you're like, oh shit, the guy you thought sorry, s- spoiler alert for the Philip K. Dick book. Um <laughs> You know, the main character you think is like a human for most of it, and then yeah. it's like he's a replicant. Yeah, and and there is a moment where that happens, and um, it's it's like oh shit, like everything I think is is right is actually wrong, and that I felt came through in a lot of the scenes in this movie. That one in particular, where it was like okay, this character is having like a breakdown because he doesn't really understand what he is, and the other characters around him have some idea of it but aren't fully. To haven't fully addressed it. Yeah. You know? Let's see what, what Amar from Toronto has to say. Oh, wow. Another Canadian caller. Hello, Canada. Hello. Hi, yeah. What have you well, got for um, us? Uh, my, um, uh, just to go back to the treatment of the female characters for a second. Yeah. You know, when I was watching it, yeah. my, uh, it, it's undeniable that the film is very violent towards all its female characters. But then I think the part where my reading of it really sort of changed and came around for me was, when you get to that point where, you know, Frazier meets him and says, oh, you thought it was, oh, that, oh you thought it, you were the savior. Oh, you poor thing. You know, I, I thought it, it read to me like the whole film is saying that, oh, this is a world where women are objects. They're being used as props to, you know, the female replicants are being used to try and procreate so that they can be this capitalist thing for Wallace. There are these erotic statues in Las Vegas and all this imagery and joy, you know, being, uh, you know, being this thing that tells Ryan Gosling's character that, you know, you're this amazing person. And then for me, after that happened, my reading of it was, oh, it's trying to say that, you know, this is a world that's centered around men and men are using women as objects, but actually the savior is a female. Right. Um, so I'm just curious to think what you sort of thought of that well, turn. Well, I, I, I actually and really it. like that, what you said, that it was like, oh, you thought you were the savior like that. It, that underscores, I'm not saying it makes it all necessary, like all the violence that we had to endure. Yeah. Um, but I do think that, that that is a point that I, maybe you've changed my mind a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's something interesting there. Um, there is this kind of idea that the the men are are sort of broke. I mean, Gosling's character absolutely is kind of a broken man in this movie. You know, mm-hmm. he slowly but sure. I mean, he doesn't seem that with it from the get go. I mean, he yeah. doesn't seem like he's having a great time at the beginning, and then it just kind of gradually uh, degrades. But I do think that, in a way, like on a more on a on a specific sort of storyline level, I think that reading is is right and interesting. Like that, the women ultimately are the. The people in power in some way or the saviors or that that because they're not empowered, they're the only people who can truly resist. If you're part of the power structure. Right. How much can you really change? But the but the under but I think the more meta reading is these characters are still there to kind of move them, the male characters along. Yeah. If you look at like the f- it, it, it as a film. Yes. You as feel a film, this, yeah. You feel this push of the female characters helping out the male characters and guiding Absolutely. the male characters and like making sure the male char- characters attain, you know, a, a, get to their destiny or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this is true of love. It's true of the Robin Wright character. It's true of joy. It's true of the uh, the the revolutionary leader. What is her name? I'm not sure. It's if you know, drop it in the chat. Yeah. Um, Anyhow. Anyway, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, for but your that's call. that's a really interesting point. I do think there's two levels there. I mean, I think there's a reading where it's like the future is kind of, the future is female, but I think there's another reading where it's like, the film itself presents it as a very you know kind of traditional yeah. relationship. I mean, I you know, I have to like I have to say like thinking about this, you know, it it is impressive that it's made me feel as much as I feel about it. Yeah. Like when I was watching. I, I definitely went through a range of emotions. There were parts where, I, and by the way, art It is, gives you the space to do that, though. It really does, and a lot of movies don't anymore. Even though it was structured like an action movie, it gave you time to think about the concepts it was giving you. I, yeah, I actually will say, on, on that point, I did not feel, in the final act of this film, I was like, oh, okay, they're going to go into this like 
big Afrasia is the name of that character. Afrasia. Um, just Frasia. Uh, the I thought they were going to go into a big action sequence, and they actually went into this very intense this the knife fight. Yeah. In the water, which is oh my god, un- stunning. And then like, you hear the calming sound of the shore while yeah. the most violent part no, of the I film mean, is really, happening. I mean, really, a really oh, incredible lush. like meditation on violence, but like, yeah. but but it never gets to this big action sequence, which yeah. I was. Very pleased. It never with. turns Minority Report on. You. It's not really an action movie. No, it's not. Like I'm not sure that I would describe this as an action movie. I mean, there certainly are moments of action. Yeah, but it's not like it's not Mad Max. Speaking of um, filmmaking, uh, Mike in LA wants to call in and talk oh, about uh, wow. sound design and visuals. What okay. are your thoughts, Mike? Mike, bring it on. Hey guys. Hey Joshua. Hey, how are you? Big fan for a long time. Um, I just watched it at the AMC uh, Dolby Cinema theaters and. You know, that's where they have the 3D sound, you know, with the uh, the speakers on the ceiling all around you. The wonderful thing about this movie, I understand about the story problems and stuff like that, but it was the visuals and the production sets were amazing. I mean, it was and stunning. And also the sound. I mean, the sound was stunning. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. That's what, N- did you guys agree? Oh, no, I'm completely. I mean, I'll say this. The biggest accomplishment of this film, in my opinion, is like visually and, and, and orally, it is like, Unlike anything that has existed for a very long time, in the in the way that the original Blade Runner is this kind of like visual and audio like assault in a, in a positive but way, the thing this is, movie the original, is very much like that. I, when I when I was watching it, I thought this is in a different time in Hollywood. The fact that a studio picture that probably wanted to, they want to make it a franchise was allowed to be as artistic and meticulous as it was. I was really surprised. Even the soundtrack, they didn't make a lot of concessions on the style. And I yeah. was really, I don't know, I was impressed. No, the, I, 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 one of the most impressive things to me was the evolution of the Vangelis soundtrack into mm-hmm. like a modern, much more modern sound, but very... So like, consistent. Very much a part of the original soundtrack. I mean, the, the, the sound, the, the music, the... Um, the sort of sound design and the visuals. I mean, the visuals. There's that shot where um, where Kay is walking, Joe is walking through the like orange radiation, and it's just sort of him. Yeah, that you, that wouldn't make it into most studio movies. Yeah, it's very there's, there it there's, is there's, right. You can yeah, see there, it on screen. Th- there's a lot of meditative sort of um, moments in this that were visually. I mean, one of the things that kind of is is annoying is I went back and watched the original right after watching this, and the original feels so small. Yeah. By comparison, you know the world is so compact, and this is like, it's like it's like a New Hope, where there was yeah. limits, but they also had a story they wanted to tell within those limits, and they did. I mean, but you know, just technically speaking, we were talking about this earlier before we started, and it's this idea like in the new film, you can go, wow, I want this like crazy building that doesn't exist. I want ten yeah. of them in a row, and somebody can just do that. In yeah. the original ones, that you were like, well, I want these crazy buildings, and so a bunch of model guys were like, we'll get to work get on that. Two really. iterations, and then they're we're like, out of time. And like, budget. We only have so much. Uh, we only have so much uh, clay. Yeah, we have so much paper mache <laughs> that we can put on this thing. It's like it is crazy to think about the idea that there's yeah. just this like endless sort of expanse that you can create uh, now because of computers. So it does feel like, but it didn't. It also didn't feel like they abused that. Like, I felt like everything was no. sort of selected for a specific agree. purpose. Nothing looks super fake. One yeah. of the things I thought was actually weird is the spinner. In a couple of scenes, I thought the spinner actually did look kind yeah. of fake. Like, it looked kind of, like, tacked on. And I don't know if that was on purpose. Like, I feel like they could have made it look more integrated. Yeah. But they maybe did it to reflect what the original film looked like. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of... I will say this, like... I mean, it was stunning. Yeah, it was stunning. We but, can nitpick, but it was stunning. But there was a lot of, like paying homage to the original movie. Sure. In the way that the Watchmen movie is like slavishly devoted Ugh. to sorry, I just that spit was on way worse. No, slavishly devoted it. to they need to use that DNA to yeah. make a replicant. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> It'd be a very bad replicant. Um slavishly <laughs> devoted to the comic book. Yeah. I feel like this movie was slavishly devoted to Oh I didn't what? feel like that. Really? No, no I, I, you're wrong. I, I, the, you're only, dead wrong. <laughs> the only thing I thought I was so happy about was they didn't come up with some twenty forty nine version of cell phones. I was like, oh thank God. Well that actually was a problem for me. Like the really? device the device the girl was using to build their memories. Yeah. Was I like, liked that. I know it was cool, but yeah. it's like that doesn't seem practical. Just get a surface. All right, we've got Noah from New York here. Noah from New York. Uh Noah, do I know you? <laughs> I feel like I know every Noah uh, in New York. I, I don't think so. Okay, good. Noah, what's I don't think up? So. Um Yeah, I wanted to kind of talk about how I, I mean I I think it's pretty obvious that or at least it was obvious to me watching that it's basically Exodus. The story that you have this villain who lives in a pyramid 
who wants to use this uh, these people to conquer the world and build his monument. Uh, but he has to find a missing baby first, who's the promised one to oh, lead them shit. out. Wow! And shit, Noah. This makes yeah. this, this makes the movie seem a lot worse now that you're raising <laughs> this. This is like classic Ridley Scott. He's so obsessed with the Bible. Yeah, he's so obsessed with it. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Wow, that's interesting. Um, I actually like that. But yeah. also, so the baby's Moses. Uh, no, who's the baby? Well, in Exodus? I think he's Moses, but I think right. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Moses yeah. who was sent down the river and sure. hidden mm-hmm. away from Pharaoh. Um, classic, classic story. But I think what's interesting is how the the movie also kind of reclaims that divine power for the women at the end. Like it's weird from the film language the the man is the subject, Van Gosling is the subject of the film, mm-hmm. but metatextually he's just a tool being used by the who leads the resistance in order to find the daughter. So yeah, is it, he? It's, it's, I mean, it's I guess. Like a weird... I, 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 I like mean, that's... here you can say from a story perspective that 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 is yeah. true that he is the device for her, but also the only character whose inner life we truly explore is his right. Mm-hmm. It's so from a, it's from the man's from point a of utilitarian view. perspective. He's still the main character. Like yeah. it's he's still the most important also, thing. Like when I think it's also going to be like when you say from his perspective because his perspective was also made by a it was made by the. I forget her name, but who becomes the daughter, who eventually yeah. is revealed to be the daughter. Everything he mm-hmm. remembers is her memories. It's all her perspective. Interesting. But because she's trapped in that bubble, she needs to act through a man's body. That's it's a really interesting point. Because men are the only people in this world with agency for a woman to get something done. She, she has used to a man. Yeah. To plant her memories and her motivations into a I mean, man. Again, I think that's. I think it's one of those things where the the story at a story level that works at a meta level. It comes off mm-hmm. in a very different way, which is interesting to think about this. I mean, which is interesting to think about the the characters and the and the sort of writing of this film. I also think mm-hmm. like um, I think there's like a little bit of biting off more than one can chew. There was this, a lot in this in this, in film, this film. You know, where it was like there's a. I mean, what you're talking incredibly talk- ambitious. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, no, what you're talking about is definitely there. And I'd rather ambition than no ambition. Right, but Let's it's almost like if, if we could have just mm-hmm. moved aside some of these subplots and sort of yeah. plot. like the romance between him and joy joy that was should have been another movie the, jared the, leto could have been cut you could have really streamlined i mean this jared leto thing. was insignificant i mean ultimately it's just annoying because we didn't need it it just it was a distraction I mean, his, for the entire his, movie his like quasi bible talk <sighs> who talks like that jared Even leto i bet he does in real life no that's the thing in <laughs> real life that's jared leto it's fucking jordan catalano <laughs> Just spewing some bullshit. On Letterman. Anyhow. Anyhow. All right, well, thank no, you for thank, your call, thank Noah. You for that that really was very good. insightful. So I don't know. How many more? Well, we got, like, time-wise. Like, should we do a few more calls? I think we, we've got about, like, Oh, we have uh, a Jared Leto clip? Oh, let's do the clip. Oh, let's do this. I just want everybody to get a sense of the yeah, Jared Leto. If you haven't seen this, I don't know why you're fucking listening to this right now. Let's cut through the BS and let you see let's some watch, Jared Let's Leto. watch a few seconds of Jared Leto. That's why he who, came to tomorrow. I, I, I found, like, intolerable to view in this film. In like, life? In real no, life? No, in, in, in real life, he looks amazing. 30 in, seconds to leave me alone? Yeah, but in this film, <laughs> can we just get him up here and take let's a look see at what he's got going on? I think Blade oh. Runner 2049 is a testament oh, there he is. to the original story and the characters that were created. From the cinematography to the script to working with Denis and Ridley, I just feel really lucky just to be on the team. Is that it? Is that it? Is that all we have? We need it. We need it. Uh, like I need like ten minutes of him talking. I, need... I just want him to be reading us. You know, Genesis. <laughs> so bad. I wish he was reading Genesis. Genesis is well written. Whatever he was saying is fucking stupid. All right. Let's see what Matthew from Columbus, Missouri, has to Matthew, say. Matthew, you've been hanging out for a while, man. Lay it on us. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Blade running. Yeah, we're just doing, doing a little right. blade running over here. <laughs> Couple of replicants, just wrapping. So, my question is, from a stylistic, stylistic perspective, what do you think of the fact that they did away with the sort of film noir narrative style of the original? Well, I think, I mean, it's hard to tell. I feel like Ridley Scott hated that he did that in the original. Yeah, I do. I mean, too. I feel like he's been working against the fact that, like, the narration, which I love. I came to the film, the original film, with the narration intact. That's the first version I that saw. That is. 
Yeah, of course. I hate the narration. No, I love the narration. I, I think it's it. fucking great. And it's very like As Dame walked in with two well, legs. It's not and... that bad. It's very good narration, actually. I'm with and Harrison Ford on this. Fine, whatever. I mean, they'll tell and you all the, he's like, Oh, we hated this or whatever. But it's like, well, you recorded like twenty minutes of narration for the film. <laughs> but like I feel like that Ridley Scott's been trying to work his way out of that noir stuff yeah. since the beginning. Because Ridley Scott really wants to do Prometheus. Let's be honest. Yeah. Ridley Scott's whole thing now is like, I want to tell creation stories. He's like in his God phase. And he's been in his God phase for a while. And so he really wants to tell like these big, epic, what is the nature of humanity? It's almost like he wishes he was Terrence Malick, but he's stuck making genre movies. And The Good Wife. <laughs> Wait, is there... Did he do Good Wife episodes? No, he was like one of the executive producers. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I never noticed that. Uh, maybe I didn't notice it. At any rate, but so I think that I do think that there's a. I think it's like intentional, you know, that mm-hmm. he wants this to be epic. He wants it to be global. He wants I'll it to also be a say bit this. larger than life. It was so interesting in the original movie. It's very cool to like come up with that cyberpunk sort of noir style. I don't know that modern audiences have the patience for it. So when you play with a genre that people already knew. Um, that's cool, but I don't think people are familiar with that genre, so it's not as much fun to play in that sandbox with new toys. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't listening because I was chatting with it's people all right. on I was the just, YouTube chat. Uh, yeah. You know, talking about the secret of life. Uh, yeah, anyway, I mean, it, life, it's BS, okay? Thank you for your call, Matthew. Yes, thank you. Um, so, look, I mean, I think, that, I think the thing is, you know, I, this has actually been very cathartic for me. And talking yeah. about it has been very cathartic because I was, had all these feelings kind of bound up. When I when I, before we did this episode, and you've worked them out. No, I don't think I have. But well, I still let's feel take like one sh- more call. Yeah, it's fine. But I we've still got, feel like it's shit all over mine. We've got John from Montclair who wants to know which version we preferred, <clears> and I think that's a good note to leave it on. Great stuff, John. What's up? Hey, Josh. I'm a huge fan. I've followed you since Engadget. Thank you. So the feeling is mutual. Same. <laughs> what if what if I had um, been following you? You don't know what I've been doing. You don't know what I do in my spare time. What if I've been stalking? <laughs> it's got a lot of downtime since the days of Engadget. I mean, it is kind of weird because I have like my relationship with you is I've listened to you talk every week for like ten years. My condolences. <laughs> that is crazy, John. I want you to look outside your bedroom window right now. Do you see a light across the street? That's me. We're actually doing yeah. this from a pod across the street from you. No, okay. So, uh, sorry. So we're talking about versions of Blade Runner, the original. I'm assuming because I think there's only one. Yeah, version yeah. Of Final Cut. The, no, so hi, I, let's let I, the man talk. I started. I started off um, having only seen the theatrical. I watched it like probably when I was like 18. I'm like 25. Okay. Um, the original but, like, theatrical cut. Narrative with the narration. With the narration. Yeah. 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 Where they like drive away at the end. Um, hey, spoiler alert. Night, Just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and then last night I, I watched the uncut one because it was on it was on um, Apple TV for like $10. The, the, the final or cut? the final cut. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a uncut's a bunch of, bunch of fucking lower. Jabba the Hutt bullshit in that movie. They changed the way people's eyes it's, look. It's, Hard to disagree. Yeah. yeah, that's what it felt like. It felt no. like I was watching like the like the 90s version of um, Star Wars. Yeah. No, How it's, dare you? No, no, he's right. <laughs> That's correct. Listen, that they, I, no, I'm no, clearly no, outvoted. Scott, revisionist history is bad. Like going back and going like, oh, I didn't really mean that. I just prefer it as a film. It's anyway. like you know when the Beastie Boys were like, we went back and we recorded all the times that we called women bitches. <laughs> it's like you did that. It happened. It's like you, like it's real. You know, yeah. Like own it. I'm not saying they were right. I'm not saying it's good. But like, just be like, yeah, I was fucking stupid, and then I got better. That happens. Like people evolve. Ridley Scott's like, but I also think he was he, he was cut off creatively from the movie. Oh, that's bullshit. And executives came in, and I, I don't know. Whatever. Really, they came in and what cut ten minutes of violence and added they put the a narration. stupid narration on it that only idiots like. I feel like I think <laughs> the narration is fucking great. I love the narration. I mean, at the end, it's pr- come on. All right. Well, I want to me, say I want to say thank you to the people who called in that we weren't able to get to. Who who couldn't we get to? Uh, wait, you know got, what? Let, wait, let, you have... know, let's take let's take one more. We've got Ryan from Chicago. Let's talk to Ryan. Ryan from Chi Town. I was You'll just, be our last. I was call. just in your neighborhood, beautiful city. It, it really is the best city. No, I wouldn't go that far. I didn't say uh, it was the best so city. My... I said it was beautiful. You know. But I did. Uh, <laughs> well, you're wrong. So my question is: Every time that Joy shows up, they play the theme from Peter in Peter and the Wolf. Huh. And I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts on the significance of that. Uh, what's the story of Peter and the Wolf? Can we talk about that? What is the uh, plot? Uh, is it about Peter Rabbit? Very, very rough. No. no, no, Peter and the Wolf. I think it's an old Russian. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, sure, the Russians. Uh, so Peter Correct. goes out and plays 
Um, there's something with a couple of, it's like a bird and a duck arguing over uh, neither is a real bird because what kind of a, what kind of bird can't swim and what kind of bird can't fly? Mm -hmm. uh, they go back and forth and then a wolf shows up and tries to eat them. I forget how it ends. Yeah, that sounds. That's, uh, but I mean, it's always, it's always used in the context of joy. Well, I think probably the question so, there is, I, is, is joy real? Is uh, Ryan right. Gosling a real person? Yeah. Or any of us? I think that's true. Oh, really? Okay. What kind of person can't feel? Right, exactly. Uh, John, you want to... We're going to play some... Oh, it's a ballet? Oh, so that's that ringtone. The Wallace ringtone. Yeah. But doo -doo -doo. <sighs> that's interesting. And it's an interesting observation that I wouldn't have. I think uh, it's interesting that, that the character's reading Pale Fire... By Nabokov, and uh, he's interested in music from the '60s. And I mean, th think yeah. about think about some of the references in this film. It's very much like Ridley Scott. Yeah, it's like you know, some Russian ballet, and uh, you know, Pale Fire, and well, thematically, Elvis. thematically, I think what you're supposed to ask is, it does like joy. Is Joy does Joy have Kay's best interest at heart, or is Joy just sort of reflecting whatever she was programmed to reflect in himself? I think that's last the last one. And well, do, do any of us do that in relationships? Here's a, here's a question for you. That's a question. Here's a question, and maybe Ryan, you can answer this. Any Ryan can answer this, but uh, you know, the the replicants. Mm -hmm. What are they? Repli I think they're. Um, Bio, like engineered uh, people. So I think they're they're it's it's an it's an organic, but so they're, they're completely organic, three D printed organic. So they're like, uh, and they've changed some stuff in the genes, like their corn or like that uh, that uh, rice they grow in India. That they've genetically engineered it to be superior in some ways. Compare comparatively to a Westworld robot, mm -hmm. there's less um, uh, plug and play ports. Like you can't you can't. <laughs> In the movies, but in the, the reason, book, no, no, in the it, book, they're robots. But in the but the reason why they need the Voigt, Co Voigt Kampf test is because they can't like plug something into them. No, and I think when you cut through, you could find some stuff, bone marrow tests and stuff. Right, you could see some like manufacturing bits and bops. Right, but they're not mechanical. No, I think they're not you're robots. talking about a meaty. They're not digital. No, right, they don't get they don't no. get recharged. I mean, Westworld like could it go through a metal detector? Westworld robots, I think right. they could not. They cannot. But uh, but these replicants, they're passing right through security. They're, they got clear. they're basically humans. They got clear. But they have serial numbers. Pre-check. And they have, they're set to expire. Yeah, like but all they, meat. But they can't be controlled. I think their brains are printed in a way that you can tell them mm -hmm. stuff. They've mm -hmm. been programmed, brainwashed. Okay, so that brings me back to this original, to my original beef, which is this the child, the secret child. Like, yeah, the cursed child. I guess I'm not as surprised that a genetic copy of a human could give birth it's a it has all the parts I think the right thing is that they did so many edits that yeah. it's sort of like when you uh have a mule it can't like the genetics are so effed up that you're at a certain point yeah. where it's not really viable you know when you think about it, the real star of this movie was terrell you know the original mm -hmm. the creator of the replicants who who embedded the greatest secret of all that they could get knocked up I, th I think the real star of this movie was the dog, who was my favorite character. The dog? Is it dog real? that drinks whiskey, basically me. That was the, the, that only, dog. the only legitimate laugh in the film was when he pours out the whiskey. In incredible. And you know Harrison Ford just did that. For sure. And that dog, it was probably he was like, whiskey. this dog's been on the set all day. Oh, I will say this one thing. The fucking <laughs> bottles in all Blade Runners, like the, bo the bottles of Johnny Walker in the original yeah. Blade Runner are dope. They don't exist yeah. in reality, right? And the new bottles... In Blade Runner 2049 are also dope. Those don't exist in reality. But what take is, notes, Johnny Walker. What is the deal? Like, make the fucking thing available. Do yeah. you like the Give the, us the Szechuan sauce. Yeah, we want the, <laughs> the Nike auto lacing shoes version of the me. fucking Johnny Walker bottle. Is that too much to ask? Is it? We should have it here right now. Why aren't we drinking the 2049 Johnny Walker black? <laughs> Why? Okay, um, anyhow. Uh, anyhow, let's talk about... What? Blade Runner's been good. Yeah. What's going on next week? I don't know. What are we doing? We uh, need to know. Uh, we, we need suggestions to, we from the listeners. Yeah. Let's okay. Here it is. All right. Chat. Speed. Speed round. Speed round. What should we do? What should we do this week that we're going to talk about next week? Weird diets. Things we, we can watch. Yeah. It, Places to go. 
you know, I don't not, have not a major time commitment. Though. No, it's fine. Nothing that's a major time commitment. I'm very busy. But something that is retainable. We're not going on a retreat. Like we're not gonna get and we're not gonna go to like a sex dungeon. No. I mean maybe I, mean, I will, I but we're not gonna a, review it. I would it. go to a sex dungeon. <laughs> I mean that would be kind of fun. I mean I'm gonna go, but <laughs> well, like, we're not gonna talk about it. No, come on. Uh so like sex dungeon, race car driving, you know get a Siri girlfriend I'm that not lives gonna, in a stick. Yeah, Siri girlfriend. I'm not gonna jump out of any planes. No. I'm not gonna go but into But if you're a, watching this live, post in the chat something we could do. Yeah. I mean, come on, People guys. want album reviews? Album reviews? We need something more ambitious. I'm only reviewing Lady Gaga. Wait. Wait. Somebody said that Johnny Walker is, is going to do <gasps> the bottle. Thomas Perez. Are you serious? What, I think he's lying. He's just fucking with us. All right. You, here's a if chance. If that's true, we if will you want, drink call it on right air. Call us right now. 202-688-1697. With got, some suggestions. you got five minutes tops to come up with a really fucking good idea for the next episode. If not, if not what are we doing? We're... I'm threatening that we're going to either do Fast and the Furious or all eight, only drink all Soylent. <laughs> those are the two options. I'm not doing Soylent. I'm not doing it. I'm, I won't, I won't well, do then it. Well, then hope someone calls in because those I are your a, options. I'm on a very strict diet right now. <laughs> of Soylent? No. Of food. But it's very strict. <laughs> I'm dieting oh, you're like a maniac. only eating food. No, I'm dieting like a maniac right now. I need to. It's fucking I amazing. Need to. There's something I'm exquisite. going to be on camera like this? Hunger is truly exquisite. Okay? Exquisite pain? No, the greatest luxury in life is to be hungry. <laughs> I mean, if you're not actually hungry because you need to eat, like mm-hmm. it's like to just go like I'm not going to eat. It's an unbelievable luxury and also a torture. <laughs> it's an exquisite. You're you're hellish, talking you're talking philosophy from the nineties. Luxurious torture. That's exactly right. People are saying this bottle's happening. <laughs> no, wait, yeah, no, what? We're getting. Hold on, I'm clicking on this link right now. We got to recopy it and take this the is, data. This is huge. This is huge. Oh my god! If we got some Johnny Walker in here. Oh, there it is. <gasps> Motherfucker. Yeah, Johnny Walker drink. And giving me the choice of different design of Johnny Walker bottles in the Blade Runner 2049, that deeply touched me because I felt that there was like a commitment from Johnny Walker to try to uh, excite me. So I had the uh, review Elon Musk. Oh my God. The design. And that for me was a bit like unwrapping gift at Christmas. How do I get this <laughs> bottle? How do I buy this bottle? Give me. This, I'm looking at the website right now. Give me this bottle. I got to get this. Yeah, I get that it's like the movie's in theaters. It's like, okay, and? Oh, wow. Where's the fucking bottle? There's no bottle. You can't buy this. No, I'm going to buy it. You can't buy it. I'm going to buy it. Where can you buy it? Uh, the internet. This is one of the worst conversations I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. This part of it. Someone wants us to review all of Elon Musk's Mars plan in depth. Mm. Critique it. Tell that billionaire what he's doing wrong. I think we need good. We got to do something better than that. That's not a great idea. I would like to just review. Here's Elon my Musk review of Elon general. Musk. Where's all the lithium coming from? Huh? Renewable? Really? Where's that fucking lithium come from? A renewable resource? Anyhow, you can read more about that. Here's on the my Allies, review so. of Elon Musk. A lot of people could have done that with a bill with PayPal money. <laughs> I disagree. The guy's a great genius, but uh, let's see him get PR back online. Let's right, see him yeah, retrofit true. all of true. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Before we go to Mars, can we go to Puerto Rico? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> if you're Trump, definitely not. What is this? <laughs> Uh, Mel and Rose, are you ordering? Wow, 120 bucks. Jesus. Yeah, that's a little steep. For are you guys Walker. catching this right now? Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Well, look at this. Oh, we're going right in. You're good. <laughs> that's good. That's great. We can get to the login right on. Okay, so there's no ideas for the show. I mean, are we going to Fast and Furious? Nobody's I guess we're going to do Fast. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> are you signing me up? <laughs> what a nightmare. What a true nightmare. Anyhow, all right. Uh, I think we got to wrap up. I'm going right. to respond to Roman here, who's uh, look. I've been. I'm right. I got a new thing coming. It's going to blow your mind. You're right. You're a little, little patoot off. I'm right. <laughs> right my ass off right now, <laughs> on some provocative, <laughs> technology related topics. Um, you take that iPhone X, and you know what to do with it. This guy's like Amazon Germany has it. It's like, dude, I don't live in Berlin. <laughs> you know yet. <laughs> Maybe they'll review that. <laughs> Berlin, what's it like to live? All right. Well, if yeah. you've got suggestions for what we can review, I want us to use the Palm Pre exclusively for two weeks. Oh, this is Ryan. Two weeks is too long. A week. A Wait, week. When is the next show? Two weeks. What's the date? I don't, nobody here does math. Give me the date. The 23rd. The 23rd of October. Mm-hmm. Thanks, fantastic. Right on the cusp yeah. between Libra and Scorpio. A very no Libra and Sagittarius. Good people to date, bad no, people to date. Libra and Sagittarius or Libra and Scorpio. 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 
That's a fucking good people that's to a hell date. world. Bad people. You to get date. somebody on the twenty third. Have sex with good people to have sex with. Both great at sex. One crazy. <laughs> crazy one, as hell. One crazy, sexy, cool. <laughs> um. Anyhow, let's do Palm Pre. I a don't week wanna, of only using the Palm Pre. I'll do a week of Palm yes, Pre. Yes, this is my dream. Wait, my birthday's on the nineteenth. Or the sidekick too. My birthday's on the nineteenth, so as a present to myself. <laughs> We're gonna Palm Pre it up. Can we use like a Palm Pre two? Yeah, sure. I mean, the thing something of, from the pre line, or the um, web OS line is so nerdy. That's All what right. we're doing. So All right, we got to wrap up. We'll see you next week on the web. Guys, this special. is great. Thank you for joining us uh, <laughs> on this this experiment. Um, the important thing is, I think we got to vent. Re- welcome to tomorrow, twenty forty nine. This is tomorrow, twenty forty nine. You know where where you think the guys are in charge, but actually the ladies are in charge, or maybe they're not. Maybe the ladies are just there to help the guys. It's unclear. But the important thing is this the, is the crazy, sexy, cool Ryan. That's the most <laughs> important addition. <laughs> It's like the dog. It's like Harrison Ford's dog. Drinking whiskey. <laughs> Nobody knows if it's real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is he real? Is he drinking whiskey? That's the important Nobody thing. Nobody knows. Anyhow, yeah, so we'll be back next week, uh, not next week, but in two, two weeks, weeks with more tomorrow. And apparently now, unless you guys come up with something better, we'll probably put a poll up on Twitter. Yeah. And figure out what we'll we're announce do. it on Twitter. So follow Josh right at now, Josh Topol- right, Joshua Topolsky. Joshua t- at Joshua Topolsky. And follow me at Ryan Houlihan. And probably it's going to be we're going to use the Palm Pre for a week. Oh, I'm so excited. Why are you excited? Because I loved WebOS and I love the idea of having one in my pocket. And, and I love the idea of on the subway people looking at me using it. It's true. You're not going to use it on the subway because oh. you can't connect anything there. <laughs> Anyhow, that's Thank our show for this week. We'll be back next week. and Or sorry, two weeks. And as always, we wish you and your family the very best, though. Turns out your family are all replicants, and none of them can have babies. <laughs>